Well, a new report out today shows that the United States military has been killing civilians in Syria. If you've been watching our show for any length of time, this is not news to you, but the Pentagon says absolutely we're not killing civilians. So this new report completely contradicts what the Pentagon has been saying. Specifically, we're talking about the 2019 raid on ISIS founder Baghdadi, leading him to blow himself up. At the time, President Trump said it was impeccable, it was beautiful, it was precise. No civilians were hurt, but a new report shows that that's not true at all. It's just the opposite of that. Here to discuss this is Kavor Kalmasian, who writes over at Syriana Analysis, of course, his great YouTube channel as well, uh, who is from Syria, living in Europe. Kavor, great to see you today. Thanks and welcome back to the show. It's great to be with you, Clayton. Thank you very much for having me. So why was the United States after al-Baghdadi at all in the first place? We'll start there. Actually, we have to put this uh, issue in a proper context. Uh, ISIS started to grow in Syria between 2013 and 2015, and it was a split between al-Qaeda leaders, uh, Baghdadi and uh, al-Jolani. The differences between al-Qaeda and ISIS are not ideological, but rather political and the struggle over who is going to control which area, and etc. And the weapons and the ammunition that arrived to Syria, and we're speaking about around $200 billion worth of weaponry, they have been sent to uh, some groups called the Free Syrian Army, Islam's Army, Ahbab al-Sham, and other groups. But these groups were too weak to, to counter ISIS and al-Qaeda, so they were assimilated with uh, al-Qaeda, or ISIS and al-Qaeda were able to bring them under their umbrella. So all these weapons that were dumped in Syria, most of them, they ended up in the hands of ISIS and Al-Qaeda. So ISIS actually grew in Syria and expanded its territory thanks to the weapons that were sent uh, by regional countries and also the United States. We've seen them driving Toyota cars, uh, tr trucks with hundreds of them, and nobody is checking the tracking number or the ser ser uh, serial number of these cars, where the hell all these cars came from. Anyways, in 2014, the U.S. Uh, declared that they are going to counter terrorism in Syria, and it was called the U.S.-led coalition against terrorism or against ISIS in Syria. Between 2014 and 2015, ISIS expanded after the U.S. declared that they are going to fight against ISIS. And the reason for that is because ISIS was using the oil of Syria. They were stealing all the oil, filling them in tankers, and they were sending them to Turkey, which is a NATO country. And the son of Erdogan, Bilal, was using the, uh, this, the, the, the oil tankers. They were get, receiving them and giving, them, giving cash to ISIS. So ISIS be, converted itself from an organization into a state thanks to its financial independence. And this was happening under the watch of the U.S.-led coalition, which were there supposedly to fight terrorism in Syria, right? However, according to John Kerry, who, uh, who had the meeting with uh, Syrian opposition figures in late 2015, he told the opposition figures that they were watching ISIS expanding in Syria, and they thought that's a good idea because they thought when ISIS expands to Damascus, they are gonna, uh, uh, ISIS is going to add pressure on, on Assad so that Assad comes and compromises and gives uh, concessions to the United States. Anyways, this didn't work out because uh, Putin intervened on the side of uh, Assad and he, uh, uh, both of them, they fought against ISIS and eradicated it. it when, when the United States realized that the, the, the use of ISIS is over. And when I say the United States, I'm very careful with my wording. It's the CIA and it's the deep state in the United States. I'm not talking about ordinary people. I'm pretty sure 99% of the Americans refuse what the, their government is doing in Syria if they uh, knew what their government is doing in Syria. When they raided on al-Baghdadi, we should know that killing the leader of any organization doesn't mean that the organization will be eliminated or will be destroyed, because this is about an ideology and not only about a hierarchy of an organization. So it will be just replaced with uh, another person. But the claim was that during this raid, they have not touched any civilians or they haven't killed any civilians, but we know for sure that when the United States was bombing, the U.S. Army was bombing uh, al raqqa city, which was the capital of ISIS, they have carpet bombed the city. They, they, they completely smashed the city like Hiroshima and Nagasaki. It was all wow. rubble. And I, I want to I do some comparisons now. If 
Russia uses this carpet bombing strategy in Ukraine, they can advance to Kiev in a matter of days. And everybody knows this. Any serious geopolitical expert or military expert or anyone who knows ABC of military affairs know that Russia, if they do carpet bombing of the cities like the Americans did in Iraq or in Vietnam or in Syria recently, they, they, they can reach to Kiev very easily, but that's not the purpose of it. Now in Syria, we learned that according to leaked documents that there were civilians, uh, civilian casualties, but the Pentagon tried to cover it up. And the question here is how many of a similar incidents happened in Syria or elsewhere in the world and the Pentagon or the CIA tried to cover up because they are together, they are able to end any sort of investigation. I mean, they're not going to condemn themselves unless there is a serious investigation from third party organizations or questions being asked. That's why it's very important to have journalists and not prostitutes and there is a big difference that the journalist is here to challenge a government and not to repeat the narrative of the government i still remember the days when journalists were there to find holes in the system and to find any uh, short uh, any any uh, let's say mistakes from the government side but nowadays it has become the people who ask questions are called conspiracy theorists and the ones they are repeating the lines, and th those are scripted lines, believe me, because the moment you see more than 10 journalists belonging to mainstream outlets, they're repeating the same lines. There is a script. These people receive a script and they repeat the narrative, and these people are called journalists, while the journalists who challenge the narratives are called conspiracy theorists. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. And I'm surprised that National Public Radio, NPR, sued to get answers on this very this 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 story i mean so they the pentagon was saying no we didn't hit any civilians they the but the man who told his story barakat ahmed barakat was one of three people in the van um and the lone survivor of this strike he was a civilian turns out that they were they were civilians they were in fact um workers at an olive press just doing their work and they were bombed. He lost his arm. He's only, he told this story. So again, we were told that these were insurgents. We were told that these were combatants. That's what the Pentagon had said, that these were, and now the story comes out. No, these were civilians. These were workers at an olive press. You're Syrian. Is this what the fear of the, is the fear of the Syrian people every day, like when they go to work, the fear of being bombed by Americans out of nowhere, just on their way to work, on their way to the farm, on their way to an olive press, being indiscriminately attacked? Uh, Clayton, since 2011, uh, so I would just mention this information, before 2011, Syria was considered one of the safest countries in the world. And you can see the indexes on this. It was probably the seventh or the eighth most uh, safe country in the world. And after 11, uh, people were going at work like crossing like putting a cross on their heads because because they could be kidnapped they could be killed they could be murdered or any any bad thing that could happen to them because uh, there were hundreds of tons of weapons were dumped into Syria and uh, in, in during such times the crazy people will carry the weapons right you're not going to expect somebody who is a philosopher or he has uh, two uh, functioning brain cells in his head who's going to carry weapons and go and kill people based on their ethnicity sect religion etc etc so those ISIS fanatics or Al Qaeda fanatics they were purposely uh, funded and supported because they're the ones who want to carry the fighting so these proxies, which the CIA says that they funded them, they funded these people, they sent them $1 billion per year between 2011 and 2017 until Trump ended this regime change war, and then he imposed the draconian sanctions. But then we have the uh, American uh, direct intervention, bombing of uh, infrastructure in Syria. They bombed one of the most important uh, water dams in Syria on purpose. And they're talking about now this water dam in Ukraine and they're accusing Russia of it, while the United States bombed a water dam in Syria and they threatened tens of thousands of people with murder uh, with that. And then they, of course, when there is an, an air raid or an operation, there could be uh, civilian casualties. I understand the collateral damage, but when the United States tries to cover up this, um, let's say, 
attacks or such such crimes, it gives you the impression that they're not interested in investigation and investigating these crimes. And let's suppose, Clayton, that they investigated and they found out that somebody is responsible for this. And then what? What's going to happen? Are they going to send this person to the ICC? Do, do, do the people know that there is a law in the United States called the Hague Invasion Act, which means any American person, whether military personnel or civilian, if he is persecuted and been sent to the ICC, the American army is legally allowed to invade the Hague and liberate these people from the Hague and take them back to their own countries. So there is, there is no, like this so-called rules-based order is just a joke. We're living in a, in a jungle where the powerful can impose its will. And I understand that probably the entire history is like that, uh, right? The entire history is b based on uh, the powerful is uh, imposing its will on, on the weaker side. But it has become uh, too much for the people to handle anymore. That's why the people are calling for a multipolar system, because for in a multipolar system, the Americans will play an instrumental role, but also other powers will play a role. And nobody, believe me, Clayton, has an interest in the downfall of the US, because the international monetary and financial system is so interconnected that if the United States falls as an empire, then the rest of the world will also go on hunger and starvation and lots of economic crisis will hit the world, including in China and Russia. So the interest of China and Russia as well is not in the downfall of the US in this regard. I'll, I'll get you out of here on this, Kavork, which is that the report in this, this report that was declassified and under the Freedom of Information Act, the report says that the US did not file an intelligence dossier before launching this strike on civilians, right? How many of these on a regular basis are happening? What is an intelligence dossier? Well, one of the things that Chelsea Manning writes about in, in this new book that Chelsea has out uh, says that he had to actually create an intelligence dossier in Iraq. And teams regularly just totally didn't read it. Like they would create what the target was. Here's the target. It's this individual. He lives at this address. He drives this van. Here is the target. And he said the teams didn't read it. They would almost never read it. And they would often attack a place that they knew that the people had moved away from that house three years ago. And in that, they killed everyone. So three years ago, this, this target moves away from the house. It doesn't matter. Now there's a whole family of civilians living in this new house, the same house, that they just indiscriminately kill, that this happens on a regular, on a regular basis. Actually, it's a, it, this, this also shows the mentality of the people in charge of uh, quote-unquote fighting terrorism in Syria. They do not see the Syrians or any other people in the region as peers, as also humans. They, see, they, they watch them with disrespect, with uh, arrogance, let's say. And uh, any number of civilians may, who could die during these uh, hostilities against ISIS, it's nothing for them. They're just like flies. Okay, they're, they, they consider them collateral damage and they don't follow up on these intelligence dossiers or read these intelligence dossiers so that they could also fix this problem in the future. And especially when it comes to the drone attacks, because unfortunately, uh, the, the US has the, one of the best technologies in the world. And also, they have one of the most competent officers in the world. And it doesn't make sense to me that every time when there is a drone attack in Syria or in Iraq or in Yemen or elsewhere, there is always civilians dying in, in, this, in this region. Why these casualties are not being minimized? What's the best strategy to fix this? And if they want to follow up on this, uh, let's say, intelligence dossier and read why civilians died and how this mistake uh, has happened, they would try to repair it. They would try to fix it in the future. And that is why we see... Uh, I believe, if, if I'm not if I'm not mistaken, 90% of the casualties of the uh, under Obama when they were bombing uh, Afghanistan with drones were civilians. So, 90%. how can we? How, yeah, how can we change that? This is this is the question. But I'm very I'm very sad, uh, Clayton, because we're being treated as not humans, and you know, and I know that we are all humans in this world, but. When we have a problem in our country that doesn't give the United States the right to come and bomb the hell out of our country in order to fix the problem, 
not every problem can be fixed by military might. But uh, with, with the United States, every problem is being seen as a nail that needs a hammer to, uh, to, to fix it. And this is the problem because the establishment one of the main pillars of the establishment in the United States is the military industrial complex. And these people are generating billions, billions of dollars. We are talking about billions of profits per year going into the pockets of few uh, influential tiny elites in the United States. And these people aren't ready to give up on their leverage, on their power, on their uh, aspirations. We are not talking about uh, just a, a national, uh, let's say, interest. No, no, we are talking about wider network of interests all around the world. And that's why you see the son of Hunter, the son of Biden is in Ukraine doing business and with China and in other places, because these people have a very big interest. It's not only about politic, but also personal for them. Mm. Well said. Yeah. And under Obama, of course, the policy is to classify anyone of military age as combatants. So if you're young, you're a target under the Obama policy, which has not changed um, under the Biden administration. Kavork Almasian, uh, always great having you here on the show. We'll link up your uh, how to pe how people can follow you in our description below. Kavork, great to see you as always. Thanks so much. Thank you very much, Clayton. Thank you so much for watching this segment here at Redacted. We are live every day at 4 p.m. Eastern time trying to share the stories that the mainstream media will not cover. You should also come over and join our community of Redacted Rebels over at redacted.inc. That's our private locals community where we can share exclusive content that we simply cannot share here on YouTube. Come over and join the rebellion together right now by going to redacted.inc. We'll see you next time.